वेरी गुड आफ्टरनून एवरी वन डॉक्टर नीता देश पांडे वेन आई वॉज इन एम बी बी एस फाइनल ईयर शी वॉज माई सीनियर प्रोफेसर एट के लिए हॉस्पिटल शी इज एन अमेजिंग टीचर एंड अमेजिंग डॉक्टर आई डोंट नो वॉट एल्स टू से फॉर हर शी हैज सेवरल प्रेजेंटेशन ऑन ओबीसिटी एंड डायबिटीज Uh, she is also in uh, USM KLE International Medical Program. So she was leading this uh, USM when we had this KLE uh, Medical Program. So she was leading that medicine team as well. She is also HOD Medicine in Brentley College at Belgao. Uh, she is also in the Belgao Diabetes Center, Weight Watch Children's Diabetes Center. She has done her FRCP, then PG in Endocrine in London, then ASBP Obesity Certification from USA. what else to say to ma'am she is an amazing amazing teacher like i have learned so much from her over to you ma'am so glad to see you let me take this some um, let me take a moment to take this opportunity to say that uh, it was a wonderful time to be with her while we made the scientific agenda of idec 2021 we have been throughout the day 6 o'clock in the morning 2 o'clock in the afternoon 10 o'clock in the night and she she uh, was extremely passionate and uh, i think it was a wonderful time to work with you on the scientific agenda of this conference day over to you thank you thank you so much uh, uh, both isha and anjali and i am overwhelmed <laughs> with the shower of praise and uh, i really don't know what to say it, it it is truly embarrassing so let me just straight away go and share my screen i think that is best thank you so much well uh, one moment yeah so the topic i'm going to go really fast because we are running out of time and i'm going to be talking about increasing the lifespan in type 2 diabetes very rightly my dear friend archana sarada pointed out to me when i showed her my slides she said lifespan so i realized that we should, we cannot be so presumptuous as to think that we can honestly change the lifespan of our patients but we try and we have to keep trying and i'm going to examine some of that evidence now what is it that really makes our type 2 diabetics comfortable live longer and live better that is more important so i do not have any disclosures for this talk and we now know that the average life expectancy of a 50 year old individual with diabetes is 6 years shorter than it would be without the disease so if we can add some years to a diabetic individual by all the means that we know of we would definitely be doing a service to the patient and his family as well and to this end the steno 2 opened our eyes it was the study was done way back and this study showed that you can actually increase the survival by 7.9 years which means the years that actually go away you can give them back to the patient if you follow certain steps so that is very very important and we know that that all cause mortality and mortality from cardiovascular disease coronary heart disease increases when you have type 2 diabetes and you can see this in this particular slide it hasn't changed much for diabetes though it has gone down for the controls so this is the steno type 2 which at that time uh, the steno 2 study they did not have the drugs that we have today and yet they attempted this uh, small study small number of patients of an effect of a multifactorial intervention on mortality in type 2 diabetes and the primary endpoint at 13.3 years of follow up was the time to death from any cause that is what they wanted to examine and look at what were those particular causes and they attempted an a1c of less than 6.5 total cholesterol less than 175 triglycerides less than 150 and a blood pressure of less than 130 over 80 this was their attempt this was their multifactorial intervention and they all used ras blockers for microalbuminuria regardless of the blood pressure they were all patients of microalbuminuria and low dose aspirin was given and how did they achieve these goals or how did they try to achieve these goals their intensive therapy was better and after a mean of 13.3 years 7.8 years of the intervention and then a 5.5 years follow up there was an absolute risk reduction for death from any cause of 20% which was phenomenal in those days given the fact that they did not have all the drugs that we have today among patients with type 2 diabetes who already had microalbuminuria and who received this intensive multifactorial intervention as compared to those who had conventional therapy so this was very important and the reduction was very significant 
And this is the treatment targets that they used, as I already told you. And look at the drugs that they used. They had, of course, ACE, ARB, and uh, diet and lifestyle, uh, of course. But look at what they had for the blood sugars. They only had metformin and their sulfonylureas and insulin. That's all they used. And of course, statins, fibrates, and treatment of hypertension. The mortality outcomes at mean 13 years after 5.5 years of observational follow-up. And what did they find? They found that uh, the primary endpoint of death from any cause occurred in 30% uh, of patients in the intensive group compared to 50% in the conventional group, which means an absolute re risk reduction of 20%. And similarly, the absolute risk reduction for any CV event was 29%. Now, this was pretty, uh, very, very impressive. What happened afterwards? Outcomes at mean 21 years later, seven years later, mortality was significantly reduced and the median, this is the most important thing. I'm talking about lifespan. So the median survival time was increased by 7.9 years, the primary outcome. And time to a first CV event was delayed by 8.1 years. So this was the significance of the Steno 2. So what did it mean? That you have to fire on all cylinders. You can't just be looking at one thing or two things in type 2 diabetes. You have to look at so many risk factors, treat all of them together if you want longevity in your patients. So the issue number one is the A1C itself. So if you're looking at the A1C itself, we know that all-cause mortality as well as cardiovascular mortality keeps on increasing as the A1C keeps on increasing. So this is an important lesson that we already know. And we also know that age-wise also, as the A1C goes on increasing, both all-cause mortality and cardiovascular mortality increase. So regardless of anything, A1C is of course important. So glycemia has to be looked into for sure. The clinical perspective is that diabetes mellitus in this particular study was associated with a 16% increase in all cause and an 18% increase in cardiovascular mortality. And an A1C of 6 to 6.9%, if you can achieve it, was associated with lowest mortality. So Take home is glycemia is very, very important. And the clinical implications are that keep looking at the A1C. It is still very, very important, though we talk today about ACVD and all of those other things. But A1C is something that you should keep looking at. Next, we come to the cardiovascular disease. We know that that is the biggest killer in type 2 diabetes. And what do we have? We know that 65% of deaths are due to CV disease, stroke is increased, coronary heart disease is increased, heart failure increased, all many fold. And we have to tackle this along with the glycemia. So it is multifactorial intervention. What do we have then? What is there in our armamentarium to reduce this cardiovascular risk? Good old metformin, there is data for that. We know the UK PDS group showed that metformin reduces the cardiovascular risk in type 2 diabetes. We would do well not to forget this. And of course, we all guidelines still talk about metformin. So this is the one drug we've always had, we will have, and we should be using it. Now coming to the newer drugs which are there, the novel glucose-lowering drugs and what happens to the CVD risk. And you can see here that we have GLP-1 receptor agonist and you have it all here on the left side where it shows you that you can considerably reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease. You have SGLT2 inhibitors, which tell you the same thing. DPP4 inhibitors are neutral. They don't actually cause benefit. So these two groups of drugs are very, very important for us. And all the meta-analysis that we have, there are more and more studies coming in. CVOT trials are there, which tell us that you can actually reduce the cardiovascular risk and mortality. So whether it is primary prevention or secondary prevention, the important thing to understand with SGLT2 inhibitors is we don't know too much about primary, uh, the, you know, the mace and cardiovascular death. Uh, they, they, it does help, of course, but the most clinically significant thing is for heart failure hospitalization, both for primary and secondary prevention. The other cases, primary prevention is uh, secondary prevention. It is a little better than for primary, but for heart failure across the board, all the drugs, very, very good. GLP-1 receptor agonists, again, we all know about the LEADER trial. 
and we also know about all of these others and they all we know that they reduce uh, cardiovascular risk and now the newest kid on the block is oral semaglutide and we all know that for both for composite primary outcome for non fatal mi death from cardiovascular causes uh, all these three it has been shown to be beneficial not so much for non fatal stroke and that's why both these drugs have made their way into the guidelines to be used even ahead of any other drug based on the risk factors next we come to chronic kidney disease and we know that all the cvots that have been done especially of sglt2 inhibitors they suggest cardio renal benefits and you can see here that they clearly favor the out, uh, you know the drug uh, in all of these trials overall they are found to be reno protective and reduce the composite of worsening of renal function or renal death so these are i am taking you through all the drugs that can reduce mortality and increase life span in a type 2 diabetes the credence also showed the same thing There's a sixty percent reduction in yearly loss of EGA part. Not after uh, the RAS blockade did we have any drugs that could reduce uh, the renal risk so well. After twenty thirty years, we have a drug that can actually reduce the renal risk. Next, we come to statins, and this is a good study, a new study. It's a meta analysis which tells you about the effect of statin on mortality risk. in type 2 diabetes and you can see here that uh, the line which is the, the the second part in both a and b because uh, a is for cardiovascular mortality and b is for all cause mortality in both these if you concentrate on the type 2 diabetes line number 2 and line number 4 these are people on statins and you can see that the mortality is reduced as compared to people who are not on statins and so also for all cause mortality so it's a very clear indication that statins reduce deaths in type 2 diabetes regardless of whether they have had coronary heart disease uh, heart disease before or they have not had so marked improvement in survival associated with statin medication when compared with those not receiving statins and this is independent of coronary heart disease or glucose lowering treatment so this is the very important thing to understand and that is why we use statins in diabetes in patients aged 40 to 75 years and you do a risk assessment to consider high intensity statin if there's 